Okay, so I'm going to talk to you all a little bit about where you can find out uh, where you can find the correct information or more trustworthy information. So obviously, you know, times are quite challenging at the moment and understandably everyone wants to keep up to date with the latest developments in the pandemic. So access to accurate and credible sources of news and information its never been more important than it is now. Uh, in February 2020, the World Health Organization warned that the COVID-19 pandemic had also been accompanied by an infodemic. So this is an unprecedented overabundance of information, as I'm sure you've all noticed. Some of it's accurate and some of it's false. Obviously, the spread of fake news, a term we hear a lot more, particularly around Trump, uh, is particularly concerning because we are in the middle of a global health crisis and the spread of fake information can have a direct impact on people's well-being. In the wake of the vaccine rollout, we've seen a particular upsurge in false information. So things like they contain microchips for a start. But other than that one being quite obvious that it's not true, it's not always easy to spot what's what's real and what's not. So I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about how you can cut through some of the confusion, find reliable information and what you can do if you aren't sure if what you're seeing is factually correct. Before I go into some of the ways you can look at information, I'm just going to talk a little bit about misinformation and disinformation, which might be terms that you've you've heard come up. But it's it's quite important to sort of know what they are in order to to understand uh, why it's you know why it's difficult to navigate the news sometimes. So misinformation is false information that is spread without the intention of misleading. So this is often spread by well-meaning but often ill-informed people. Uh, we're human beings, we're not perfect and we all make mistakes. So sometimes we, we hear something on the TV or we're talking to friends and then we relay it and then the message changes as we go along the way and it becomes incorrect as it moves further and further along. So that's kind of how the spread of misinformation can happen. And obviously it spreads a lot easier at the moment and in particular in today day and age with social media. So we see a post, we believe it's true and you don't always just have to share a post in order for it to be kind of become more prominent. Simply commenting or liking a post off, off occasionally drives it up in people's news feeds. Uh, so example, as I've just said about recent, recently circulating false information uh, about the virus it, and the vaccine is about it containing chips or the mRNA vaccine change in DNA. Uh, mm. In the UK, you may have seen kind of uh, later last year, you know, theories linking the rollout of 5G uh, to the spread of the pandemic, they escalated to the extent that telecommunications infrastructure was damaged and the government actually had to issue a rebuttal of the fake claims. Uh, in terms of disinformation, so this is a deliberate dissemination of misleading or biased information with a manipulated narrative or facts. So the difference with this is the intent. So this is intentionally biased information that's been manipulated can be propaganda and it's aimed at disrupting public order or manipulating an agenda obviously we've seen a lot of, of that kind of come to the fore in terms of the american election and kind of everything else that's followed with trump uh, some of the most recent dif disinformation activity to date in terms of covid19 has been phishing campaigns so for anyone who's not aware what a phishing campaign is this is a it's a fraudulent attempt to obtain sensitive information such as bank details, usernames, passwords. And at the beginning of the, the kind of COVID-19 pandemic, they initially were crafted around the availability of PPE, so masks, testing kits, and just general information. But then the people kind of targeting with these campaigns, they got clever. So more recently, we've seen the emergence of things that look at unemployment, welfare benefits and stimulus packages. So in August 2020, uh, HMRC were investigating more than 10,000 email, SMS, social media and phone scams that have been reported to themselves. So if we can have the next slide. Okay, so some of the things to consider when you're looking at information. So one of the first things is, is, is this a reliable source? So the most reliable sources of information remain public health bodies like Public Health England, the NHS and the World Health Organization. 
So while we're all very well aware that the experts aren't infallible and guidance can change, as we see it changing week to week and sometimes day to day, this, these sources, they're still more reliable than a friend's friend of a friend's cousin on Facebook. Uh, if you want to know what the current advice from the UK government is, the gov.uk uh, website includes the latest, all the latest information, obviously on the social distancing and the, the lockdown measures. So the next thing to consider is, could this be a fake article? Uh, appearances can be deceptive. False news can be hidden on websites that are made to look like familiar sources, like government sites and news outlets. So things to look for are like uh, phony URLs. So if the URL doesn't match the site you're looking at, very often that's that's a bit of an indicator that it, it's not it's not a proper site. Bad spelling, uh, awkward layouts, or just in generally in general strange articles. If you're using social media platforms like Twitter, uh, the account name very often matches the handle in in some way. If it looks completely different, that can sometimes be a giveaway that it's a it's a fake account. Uh, on Facebook, just check the page information where it's come from to see how reliable it seems, and have a look at what other information the accounts. Uh, pushing out one of the things you can also do is you can you can see if particularly again on social media to see if the account where it's coming from is verified so most nhs sites and government sites are are they'll have a blue tick which is a it shows that they're verified by the social media platform source strangely enough we don't have one in that just because uh twitter and facebook have stopped verifying accounts at the moment but we do hope to have one in the future, but you can still trust us. Uh, other things to look out for is misleading pictures and videos and stories about particularly around the coronavirus vaccines. There has been a lot of edited content out there, which is unrelated or it's taken out of context. So look elsewhere for the information, such as the trusted sources we mentioned earlier. And if it looks a bit dodgy, it probably is. Another thing to give a bit of consideration to is, is the information out, is the information I'm looking at up to date? So look out, just look at the published or reviewed date. So in particular for COVID-19, the most recent date on the content, the more recent the date on the content, the better. So again, as we know, the science around this is constantly, it's, it's constantly evolving and the consensus and the, the feeling about it can change quite quickly. So the best websites will keep up on on top of regularly updating things. Uh, another thing to think about is, is there anything missing? So if you're looking at a headline, read the whole story, not just the headline. Headlines are meant to be attention grabbing, but they can be often misleading without context. So it's important just to read the whole story, watch out for any images, numbers or quotes that don't have sources and that could have been taken out of context. So COVID-19, it's not new, but it is still an evolving, it, it's an evolving situation. There's still a lot we don't yet know about it. So just be wary of anything that seems to be making definite claims about the, about COVID-19 or the, the vaccines. Uh, another thing to think, up, think about is, is the information backed up? So all the previous sources we've mentioned the most rep rep reputable websites they'll give details of original sources where things come from news sites like bbc and sky news will do this as well so you can always see that the claims are based on good evidence last thing is is every fact true so you'll see a lot of posts particularly on so social media where there'll be long lists of advice and it's easy to believe that because we know one fact contained within them is certain so say something like hand hand washing and wearing a mask it's easy to make an assumption that everything contained in that must be true uh, don't always don't always believe what you're reading and just go and, and check the facts if you're not sure of them so I'm just going to show you a bit of an example now of what we're talking about if we can have the next slide so you might not be able to see that properly, but I'm going to give you a brief outline of what it is. So in November 2020, this letter was shared as part of a social media post. So it shows a response to a freedom of information request from a Yorkshire NHS trust. So the question submitted for the FOI on the letter says, I am trying to gather the information regarding the actual deaths within the trust due to COVID-19 for the period 
of February 2020 to September 2020. And the response to the Freedom of Information request reads, Southwest Yorkshire NHS Partnership Foundation Trust has not had any debts due to COVID-19. So obviously this post, when put on Facebook, received a lot of attention because this, for conspiracy theorists, was a, a an indicator that the you know the the whole COVID nineteen was a conspiracy theory and deaths weren't really happening. It was all being hyped up. Uh, has anyone got any thoughts on that on that letter? Is it real? Is it fake? No, anyone? Well, I guess I'd say it's fake, but same. I'd assume it's fake. Anyone else? It's difficult to read, so I'm, I'm assuming there's something obvious on it. There's no address. So, you might be interested to know, it is actually a real letter and it is a real freedom of information and the information contained in it is correct. Mm -hmm. The really important thing that's missing from it and was missing from the social media post that it was contained with is that this particular NHS trust only provides disability, mental health and community services. These would be incredibly unlikely to treat anyone who was seriously ill with COVID and therefore deal with debts. So the trust itself would not have had any debts within it. So this is about looking at the context. So it is real, but somebody has taken it and used it widely out of context. Yorkshire did experience COVID debt, as I'm sure we're all aware. According to the government data from that time period, uh, they actually had 5,012 deaths where COVID was mentioned on the death certificate. So that's just a really good example of how something can be incredibly misleading when it's just placed out of context. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we can have the next slide, please, Beth. Thank you. So some of the ways that you can fact check information. So obviously if you don't recognize the source of the information, try and try and find out where it's come from. If it's from a named organization, look them up, have a look at the about page on their website or search for information about them on Google. Uh, there's a couple of places that you can go to, to check some facts if you're seeing them. So the two I'm gonna mention in particular are UK based ones. So the, the first one is, is full fact. So that is the UK's independent fact checking service. Uh, they have also created an ask full fact feature. So you could submit questions and they will check, they will check those facts for you. Uh, another one is Infotagion. So this is one that's been set up specifically in the wake of the, the COVID-19 pandemic. And it's another expert fact checking service. And it's dedicated to making sure the information on COVID-19 is correct and looking at what's being put out there. Uh, they use reputable sources from WHO and the UK and based on other government advice. It's important to say as well that the social media platforms themselves are, are doing a lot uh, in terms of fact check and content now so you may have come across posts where it will have a flag on it that says this this information is not verified or contains, contains incorrect data so they're very uh, they've been pushed a lot by the government to 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 be on top because because the spread of the false information was was so prolific particularly late last year uh, and obviously if you know if you're seeing something and you're completely not sure about it you can always ask us uh, and that's it has anyone's got any questions can i just point out about uh the letter that you've just shown from the south yorkshire yep. people surely those yep. the, whoever sent that letter out should have mentioned on mm -hmm. the letter that they are a mental health side of the nhs and not clinical Surely it should have been put in the letter. So, so that's a bad mistake by them, isn't it? It, it? it it is. But what it is, is is so freedom of information requests, they, they come out from a very specific, it tends to be an individual within the trust and it's a straightforward kind of data input sort of job that answers mm -hmm. it. So they tend not to kind of uh, elaborate on details. Yeah. on details that perhaps in perhaps in this instance they should have considered how this how this information might be put out out of context but i mean if you the, the original social media post is still out there and when you see it 
it it gained a lot of traction in terms of people seeing this as evidence for for a conspiracy and a a, a cover up. But then there were comments interspersed with it that anyone who knew this particular trust knew that it was a it you know it it wasn't a a provider of critical care for for people it was it was mental health and disability so but yeah you are right in kind of knowing how this could potentially be manipulated it might have been you know good practice for them to put in a line about that but i'm sure they were thinking in hindsight the same thing the the problem we could face over the well coming years is that uh, more and more of the youngsters today especially don't actually watch mainstream news they don't watch the ITV mm-hmm. or BBC or Sky News or they get all their information through social media and that's going to be a huge problem absolutely and that's one of the reasons there's been uh, th- th- there has been a, a lot of uh, action from the government in terms of that because they just they know how how influential social media can be particularly in the in the the wake of situations like this and i think post covid 19 whenever that will be we will see an, a really big shake up of social media platforms and how they disseminate news as i said they're already starting to to crack down on it there's there's reporting features uh, have been embedded more into to facebook for reporting posts that aren't and they're acting a lot quicker but i think we're also going to see a big shift in terms of government policy on how on on how they can and and should and putting a lot more of the onus back onto them to ensure that the right stuff's out there because exactly what you've just said i mean i've got a 17 year old brother and i don't think he would even know how to to get to a news channel on the tv so you know i think there is a flip side to that though as well like um, like with the generations that are coming through now, okay, like there's going to be a lot of people who just believe anything they're told. But when you look at how documentaries have changed over time, like things that are just coming out now on Netflix, when they make specific claims, they do back them up a lot more. Um, mm-hmm. Like if you watch documentaries from like 20 or 30 years ago, it's very much they'll make a statement and you're just expected to just take it completely on trust mm-hmm. without even knowing yeah. sort of who's, the, who's made the documentary. Whereas now, um, like especially now that people are getting more critical of medicine and, and the law as well, um, it seems like they go, I think I think there's, there's more of a split now between people who just believe anything on Facebook and people that want to know all the details. Yeah. Whereas yeah. before I mean, it was, I mean, you- Unified. I mean, you are. I mean, you're all. You are. You know, you are always going to have a split between. There will be people who will will not take something for, you know, at face value, and will will look and to find more details. And I think as the as the social media platforms push back on the the people who put the information on, you will see content that is a lot more backed up, which makes it easier easier to verify. It's just the problem with. It's a lot of the problems tend to center around the social media algorithms at the moment, particularly with Facebook, as it, it doesn't, you don't even necessarily have to share a post for it to become more visual. A simple interaction with it will drive it, will drive it up. And it's, it's a bit of a difficult one, but then you can have it, you know, you can mainstream media can get the facts correct, incorrect. And, you know, they can manipulate figures just, just as, you know, just as badly so yeah well, like a lot of so, it, nutrition advice from the 50s we're finding out now that it's not just wildly wrong but it was, um mm-hmm. often a lot of it was them um, to do with big companies lobbying mm. so it is difficult i don't know I don't know if anyone on scene actually. I tried to find it uh, to to drop it into the presentation, but the person who posted it has, has subsequently deleted it. But we ha- we actually had within the within the carers group on Facebook, the the NAC uh, patient carers and patient website. There was a one of one of the followers from uh, uh, the USA had dropped in a a news article that stated that two people had died during the Pfizer vaccine trials it was a complete when I when I looked at this website where it come from it was a complete fake news site as I said it's we we blocked it and it's subsequently been been removed by the person who posted it originally but it was 
it was a really good example of just how good some of these fake news sites can look it so it's just they are very very convincing so it's just about being you know if, if you're not sure just just ask so yeah yeah there's another website that is my go-to that is very very reliable um called snopes which is a bit snopes, of a funny thing. yeah it's s-n-o-p-e-s yeah. and it's, it's not like it, it won't tell you whether a particular post is true or false but it has all the the usual conspiracy theories and fake news it collects them all together and it it's very good at explaining where it came from why it's wrong and what the real version is and it's yes yeah, snopes, so snopes is one of the it's it's one of the original kind of before the term fact checking was kind of coined uh, through internet usage snopes was one of the first places that kind of did that it, it tended to take you used to see a lot of the stuff that was urban legend would kind of yeah. snopes would pull that stuff up and where it where it had come from uh so that is one of the one of the original one of the original sites is a fact fact check uk is the is the uk based one that it, it's not new it wasn't designed specifically for for covid but all the sites so infotagen is obviously covid uh, completely COVID, uh, fact check and Snopes, they all have sources on them where you can go and look at the most recently debunked myths around the vaccine and the, the virus in particular. So they are really good. I mean, they're just really interested resources. Anyway, if you go and have a look on them and you can see some of the some of the things that have been, been debunked recently and you kind of scratch your head and think, how did anyone ever believe that in the first place? But I'm seeing how often the same yes. security theory gets reused Mm -hmm. time and time again yeah. things just come around again yeah oh and also yeah. if, any, the, uh, if anyone seems to be selling something like any kind of diet any kind of supplements mm -hmm. take that with a big pinch of salt uh, yeah yeah mm -hmm. fish the, the fish and scams particularly are a really i had uh my own nan questioning me about a it was a fishing scam that was related to COVID and the bank, and she rang me up in a in a right panic. Uh, and it's 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 not very nice, but they they look convincing to people, and it's uh, and unfortunately people are being being caught out by them. It's 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 I don't know how these people sleep at night, but clearly they don't have an issue with it. So yeah. No, the case of the pensioner who was charged one hundred and sixty pounds for some sort of injection. Yeah. And they small. said it was a COVID vaccine, didn't they? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's evil. Yeah. That injection could be mm. riddled with germs yeah. anyway. Plus, they robbed them. You know? Yeah. They went back after 21 days as well, didn't they? And, and gave her another but one for, didn't for, yeah, that. for £100. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. Swines. Yeah. God. Yeah. 92 year old woman knocked on the door, said they were from the NHS, come to give them the vaccine. <laughs> put mm. something in her arm and, and said we wanted £160, went back 21 days later, gave her another one for £100. God. Wow. That is evil. Mm. It's horrible to have to be thinking mm. every single thing you hear. Mm. Definitely. Mm. And it's the fact that not everybody yeah. has yeah. got somebody to ask. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. yeah. And it's yeah. fear, isn't it? You know, especially with a vaccine. No. You're 90 years and you haven't had it yet. You're probably worried, and your family will probably say, Have you had it? Mm. And, and somebody says they're from the NHS and offers to vaccinate you. Yeah. You can see why you'd say yes. Well, can't you? been, if you've been isolating as well since March and you've not mm. been out, and this is like yeah. your lifeline and gets mm. out there. Yeah. yeah. Just jump. Yeah. Think, oh, finally, I can get on, and I've got somebody in mind because I'm telling that because I know someone who's waiting at the door to just escape. So, mm. see how easily they would be drawn into that you know, that someone knocks and saves them. And even if they flashed sort of some sort of credentials, mm. you know, I know for a fact that my mother in law would not even scrutinize mm. that, she'd just accept that that was it. Yeah. There is a picture of them on uh, CCTV picture on BBC News that they're asking for if anybody can identify them. Right. Mm. And I'm 
just I'm just looking at that that same that same picture now, and you think that this this 92 year old must have been incredibly vulnerable yes, because, because the you gentleman does not them... look like anyone who would knock from the NHS. No, no, you know, dressed you in a tracksuit with a, gate, a let top knot and a yeah, no, oh no. So then, you know, yeah. So you think that they must have had a knowledge of how vulnerable this particular individual mm-hmm. was mm-hmm. to know that they would be susceptible to. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's. You can buy a pair of scrubs off the internet. He's not even got a pair of scrubs on. No. It's just... Some might have, you know, sort of forms of dementia. And so, you know... Yeah. Mm-hmm. They do that, they'll just, they'll just agree to it. I mean... Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, my own mother got done like that. Um, not for yeah. COVID, but, you know, she had dementia and someone knocked on the door and said they were from the water board. And they... Mm-hmm. And she just let them in and they came in and they took all the money and... You know, one kept her talking by the sink, running the water, the other one's upstairs emptying all the stuff. And then they marched off down the road, job done. And she mm-hmm. she didn't even understand what happened. All she knew was something wasn't right and something had happened. And she rang me and said, something, something's not right. And uh, it's absolutely terrible to think that, you know, and they're so bold about it as well. Mm-hmm. Well, as you yeah, can- must have some knowledge that these people are you know, um, to be targeted because they're vulnerable. Shocking, aren't they? And they can be very pushy as well. Like um, I had uh, somebody said they were wanted to read the meter, but they didn't seem right. And he got very, very aggressive about wanting to come in my house. Yeah. Well, that's a sign in itself, isn't it? It's a sign in itself. Yeah. Shut the door. Yeah, and it's like unprofessional behaviour is... Yeah. Or if you do, if you get a gut feeling like so, this is a bit funny. Yeah, because the obvious mm-hmm. thing for that is, uh, well, I can come back later if it's not convenient. If it mm-hmm. wouldn't affect the professional, mm-hmm. or oh, you can ring the company. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. But ring the company not with a number that they've given you. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Tech, technology and and social media and everything it's it's a fantastic thing but it does have it yeah i mean I it does it, it does have its drawbacks these people who find these ways through uh, the technology and mm-hmm. the vulnerable people i think if they applied some of that in the right places yeah it'd be absolutely amazing yeah. because mm-hmm. you know, the, the genius that some of them you know come up with but you think why don't you apply it in a good in a good way instead of a negative way because they, you know, they, they could actually be quite useful, couldn't they? But they wouldn't make as much money, though, would they? No, no, that's right. No, they wouldn't. No. 